Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ben with Empire's Comics Vault, and this is Empire's CVTV, our very first episode, and we're going to be talking to you today about the new books that are coming out. Tomorrow is Wednesday, as everyone knows. That is New Comic Book Day. I want to talk to you about a couple of them. The first one here is the new X-Men Legacy. Number 252 comes out tomorrow. 250 was out last month, obviously, and it's a good jump on point for everyone. New Direction coming off of Age of X, and we've got Mike Carey one of the most underappreciated writers out there, I feel. An X book, of course, it gets plenty of sales, but everyone always talks about the astonishing or the uncanny. Great books, but try carry. His characterizations are great, his dialogue is good, and his character development is incredible. Especially when you're dealing with the team of Rogue, Magneto, and Gambit. Longtime X-Men fans know there's a little bit of a triangle going on there, and he's really delving into it. Right there, where you were like love triangle, you had opportunity to go like this. Love triangle. Oh, jeez. Uh, see, I'm awesome. I, I, yeah. Uh, Woo. It's not me. <laughs> it's not quite the counter of slap. Ron, you, you, you need I'm to. I'm teasing. I'm you teasing. You need to poke your head over the, around the thing and do it. <laughs> love triangle. Well, I would have slashed you for that too. He has really got a nice <laughs> gift slap on that one. Do it. So give 250 a shot. Jump into 251. We're following Legion. Um, Xavier's son from way back, Moira McTaggart. His multiple personalities have actually escaped into the real world out of Age of X. They're hunting him down because that never works out well. You know, with Legion, everything always seems to go wrong, and they're cleaning up the messes for that. The next one I popped up uh, is a personal favorite of mine, and it's probably one that you guys recognize from back in the 90s. John Byrne, back in the heyday of everyone putting out their own book, went ahead and started a book called Next Men. It's about five individuals who wake up, find out that their lives have been an experiment. They've been living in a virtual reality world, and now the, how do they deal with the real world? And more importantly, they each have superpowers in a world where there are none, and he goes into the fact of what if you did have super speed? What would that do to your body? What would that do to your clothes? What would that you know do, period? Same thing with the guy with super strength. He can't touch anything. The girl who's invulnerable, her hair is like needles. Uh, her, her fingernails are like knives. So it's a really interesting book, but there's a lot more to it and a lot more layers as he really delves into uh, the, the government, into corporations, um, in, in, into the world reacting to these superheroes. It was gone for about 15 years. Number one came out just a little while ago. There, any good comic shop should have it. This is John Byrne, like the classic X-Men creator, writer and artist. Um, the trade comes out tomorrow. It's a hardcover, well worth it. If you guys want to check it out, it's a really good book. I cannot say enough good things about it. And for longtime fans who haven't read it, uh, just wait till you see what he does to these characters. Uh, it's gonna tear your heart out. All right, we're coming up to DC here, and I picked a couple things going on because DC's still reeling from the brightest day. We jumped right into Flashpoint, but we still have yet to resolve some of the issues, such as Swamp Thing and the different personality, or the Alec Holland versus the Swamp Thing, the merging of Vertigo back into the DCU. That's where this is taken off. It's titled Brightest Day Swamp Thing and deals with the uh, what's going on with Alec, what's going on with Swamp Thing. But really, it should be titled Hellblazer because the entire thing is John Constantine and Batman. And I personally haven't read a lot of Constantine, but this makes me want to read it. With the snarky remarks, the British attitude, uh, it's a really fun book, especially watching him put Batman in his place. So in the first issue, it really sets up Batman and John Constantine trying to figure out what's going on with Swampy and why he's acting the way he is after the events of Brightest Day. So if you were at all interested in Brightest Day, uh, if you were uh, unsure about how it ended and where it was going, this three-issue miniseries is where you're going to want to go. And just a quick nod, if you guys haven't been reading it or haven't uh, kept up on the DC News, they're going to relaunch their titles. We're going to have 52 titles, all at number one. There's uh, lists on our Facebook. We, if you're in the area and you want to stop by, I've got printed out lists. You can go through the whole thing, see who's writing, who's drawing, go from there. But Flashpoint is where it's all springing out of. We've got a bunch of number ones, a bunch of minis, and then the eight issue series itself where Flash finds himself, uh, and we're talking Barry Allen, finds himself in another world, an alternate reality, and he doesn't know how he got there, he doesn't know any of the things going on, he has no powers, and no one seems to remember the Flash. So from that alternate reality, we're going to be spinning into the relaunch that DC's doing with all those new titles. So if you haven't checked it out, 
check out some of the Flashpoint stuff because that's going to be the important things for the characters that you love. They're going to be a lot of the same things that we already know, but there's also going to be a lot of new things. It's going to be a merging of the new and the old. So uh, a really good time for DC. Cleaning house, starting over, great jump on point. And uh, next week when we do the video or podcast, or when we do the video, next week when we do the video, we're going to actually have a special announcement about the 52 titles because I personally am really excited about it. And uh, I hope you guys are as well, and I'm hoping to get you excited. This one is just a personal favorite of mine again. Um, imagine that, picking the ones I love. Uh, Rocketeer. You guys probably remember the movie. Uh, plenty of comic books out there for it. Really classic stuff. You can see that if you're interested in the old stuff, that you can get it. Ask your retailer and he'll order it for you. He can get them in in a couple of weeks. Uh, but what this is, is these are all short stories done by different creative teams. And it deals with the Rocketeer, it deals with World War II, uh, it deals with pulp, it does science fiction, um, a little bit of fantasy, but really a lot of pulp noir science fiction. So if you're into that, you like guys with big helmets and rocket packs, uh, this is the place to go. <laughs> That's going out. Uh, all right, let's do another one. If you like giant samurai monkeys, this is the place to go. Awesome. Yeah, no, no big helmets and rocket packs. That was a... Uh, and because we are the home of Joss Whedon and Serenity Buffy fans here in Sacramento, I want to let everybody know that Angel and Faith have their own miniseries coming up. Angel and Spike were at IDW. Now they're moving over to Dark Horse with the Buffy book so we can have a more cohesive whole. Uh, check it out. It's coming soon. It's going to be good. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching this, uh, taking the time out of your busy day. And we will see you guys all next Tuesday. Have a great week. Let me thank a couple people here. I want to thank both Junior Bruce and Ron Ledesma for being such nags that I'm finally doing this and I'm finally uh, getting this out there for everyone to see. I'd also like to thank uh, Ryan Tracy, Nick Hendricks, Doug Briel for everything they've done around the store. To